Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I have a very special guest with us. I'm very excited to introduce Justin Benton, and he has a really amazing story to tell about his son who um, has a neurological disorder, which is autism, and how he went on a journey to try to find a way to help his son and how he actually accomplished that. So, Justin, why don't you tell people a little about yourself, who you are, and tell them about your amazing story, because it's truly an, just an amazing journey that you you had uh, ventured on. Absolutely. Well, it's such a pleasure to be here, and you were on my podcast, and The Miracle Plant, now I get to be on your podcast, so I really yes. appreciate the time to, to chat more with your audience, and you had such an amazing story yourself. So I found myself in 2014, um, it was our second child that was born, uh, Shay. And uh, it was our first boy. We had a girl before that, Zoe. And then Shay was born. He was a healthy, happy kid. Life was good. We were jet setters, golfers. Um, business was good. Um, you know, we really couldn't ask for more. And, uh, you know, then when he's about three years old, all of a sudden after a routine checkup, he, uh, he started to lose his pattern to speak and his communication. And so something was off. Us dads were kind of like, well, it's probably just a stage or maybe he's just growing or maybe he's just tired. But my wife took him in uh, and uh, he came back. We got a phone call that he had uh, uh, developed um, severe autism. Um, so he no longer communicated, no longer talked, no longer uh, you know, was playing baseball in the backyard, all those regular things that kids do. And so, you know, at first you just don't know what that even means. A lot of us don't even know. Is it, is it contagious? Is autism hereditary? Is it you know, what, how did this happen? Yeah. And so you do a bunch of research and we did. Um, and there wasn't a lot of hope. It was really kind of what we were finding was like, oh, you just deal with it. And I wasn't going to accept that because he was already healthy and happy communicating and, and all these kinds of things. And so I was like, well, what else can we do? So my mom was a holistic healer and uh, she's a psychologist as well who works with kids with special needs. And so I called her and I said, come on out. Apparently there's some diagnosis going on and she flew out and she gave me the same news. And she said, yeah, there's something wrong. And so then I just remember almost like collapsing when I heard those words, cause I knew it was real then. Yeah. And so the first thing we did was we went and got food allergy tests. We did all the batteries of tests, not this typical hospital stuff, you know, yeah. I mean, those guys are great, but what we want to know is we do a hair sample um, um, through a company that um, up in Canada that will um, for like 150 bucks, tell you every food, that your body is either receptive to or not receptive to. And so we did the food analysis first. We did the research um, uh, on what we were seeing. And, and a lot of people, I mean, just, I mean, this probably isn't brand new information for a lot of people, but look, number one, cow's milks are meant for calves. Yes. <laughs> Dairy products are not meant for humans. I mean, yes, they taste good. Don't get me wrong. I love some cheese, <laughs> but if you have a health issue, um, and, and basically, uh, you know, getting rid of cheese, getting rid of, of, uh, dairy, getting rid of, um, gluten, these things are not meant for our bodies. Our bodies did yeah. not develop over millions of years to, to eat, um, cow's milk and to eat, you know, wheat. That is right. not what we would developed over. And so we eliminated those from his diet immediately. And then if you look at our normal American diet, the processed foods, the refined sugars, all the crap that's in there. I mean, we probably have the, the I would just go ahead and say it. We have the, the the worst food on the planet. Our country, without a doubt, I don't even know who's number two. We have the worst food supply on the planet. Now, yes, oh, great news is you can find organic. You can get rid of the pesticides. When we did the test with my son, his scores were off the charts with pesticides and heavy metals. He was off the charts, a 99%. His body was completely, um, you know, what's called autoimmune. It's attacking itself. It doesn't, it's over inflammation. It doesn't know which cells are good cells. And, and it's a lot of it, our food is our medicine, you know, and there's a lot of external things that happen in our life and, you know, pills and, and big pharma and things like that aren't, aren't natural. And, and they weren't here 150 years ago. And we've been here a lot longer than that. So right. once we cleaned up his diet, we saw some progress. His severe autism went down to moderate autism. Uh, so we got to start to reteach him how to talk and, and communicate and those kinds of things. Uh, but I wasn't happy as his father because he wasn't all the way back to what he was before. So I kept researching. I kept looking. I was open. And, and this is kind of like that manifestation. Whatever you want in life, if you're just open to it and you're looking for it and you're hungry and you're always aware, there will be opportunities that pop up. And the opportunity for me was I was sitting at my 
uh, a little busy bees, the diner. It's from the 1950s. It's my friend Todd. And he was a cannabis farmer. He is a cannabis farmer. We're just sitting there uh, catching up. And he said, hey, I said, so what's going on? He goes, well, I'm making this new product for my buddy who's a doctor. It's called the CBD pen. And I was like, what are you talking about? And, and a CBD pen, what is it like uh, something from Seinfeld, like the astronaut pen that writes upside down? I, mean, I don't understand what you mean. What's a CBD pen? He goes, he goes, it, apparently it's like a roll on that you roll on knees for like pain. And I was like, well, that's interesting. Why is he asking you as a cannabis farmer to help him with a project? And he said, well, uh, CBD comes from cannabis, uh, a strain called hemp. Mm-hmm. which means it has very, very little trace amounts of THC or to zero. Right. And so I was like, that's weird. I said, okay, well, that's cool, man. So what do we all do when we get new information? We go to Google and I typed it in and I said, you know, CBD, which it stands for cannabidiol. And so I was like, well, that's cool. And then immediately I saw how I was helping children with epilepsy. And I know that's your story. Yeah. And um, it was helping Charlotte Figi and her mom, Paige. And, and I was just like, whoa. And then there was coming from cannabis, hemp. Yeah. And so yeah. I was like, this is nuts. And so the, and then I obviously I did, okay, CBD autism. And there wasn't anything there then. But my brain was like, okay, so if it's helping a neurological disorder like epilepsy and seizures, then this has got to it's gotta help my son. That's all I went on. Yeah. And so I did some research, tried some products out there. Nothing really worked the way that I wanted. Um, and I dug deeper and then I found out everyone was um, processing and heating and, and basically using the big pharma model for uh, making CBD. Well, actually, if you want to get healthy, plants are meant to be eaten. So I just I was raised holistically that clicked. And so we just made some grew some hemp in our backyard in, in California. And I made a cold pressed oil, which is just like olive oil or just mm-hmm. like orange juice. And then one day my son was at a pumpkin patch and he was having a horrible time and his head's over his ears and, and uh, screaming, kicking under the bench. And, and us, all the other kids are picking pumpkins. And I gave the little pink shirt that we made that morning to my wife. And I said, try this. And she gave it to him, the raw hemp oil. And literally within 30 seconds, he snaps out of his tantrum. Really? And then he goes, runs off and goes, picks a pumpkin with his sister and all the grandparents and aunt and uncles are there. And they're like, what was that? What did you give them? And it's like just some raw hemp that we made. And that was our aha moment. And fortunately, and, and just so blessed and grateful to say that he's no longer has a diagnosis of autism, uh, you know, with great food and nutrition and lots and lots of raw hemp oil. Uh, my son is a healthy, happy kid. He wouldn't hit three dingers on baseball. Uh, he's got a game today and uh, he's uh, excelling in academics and music. And uh, it was all because... Uh, I trusted my instincts, which I always tell parents and people, do your own research and, uh, you know, do what makes sense to you. And we had a great support team. And so that was it. I thought, okay, that was it. I got my miracle happen, answers to my prayers. But um, I said, you know what, I should probably share this story and pay it forward. And so we just started a little .org called 101hemp.org. We put up a sign. And, and I thought all I was going to do was tell other autism families our story and give them access to the same products. But lo and behold, so many, this is now in this 2018, that's when the farm bill passed, which legalized uh, hemp, which it always should have been legal. George Washington grew hemp. Right. Thomas Jefferson grew hemp. I mean, it's yeah. for rope and clothes, but <laughs> you know, go down that road. But anyways, it was completely explicitly clear that it's federally legal. Anybody can grow hemp. And so um, in 2018, when that bill passed, then everybody started beating down our doors. And when I saw it helping people with fibromyalgia, neuropathy, uh, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, and then cancer, when I saw it helping people with cancer, that's when I said, okay, the world needs to know more about this plant. Um, And even back in, um, you know, biblical times, um, you know, if you look up in the Bible, there's this thing called cannabosum. So when Moses was looking at the burning bush, uh, you know, the burning bush gives him the recipe for the anointing oil. And one of them is six pounds of cannabosum. Well, cannabosum is cannabis. Yeah. So actually in the anointing oil that um, was given to Moses 2,800 years ago, it was cannabis. And when Jesus came around, uh, his last name is Christ. Jesus Christ is Christ means anointed. So in the anointing oil he used for the healing uh, there was actually six pounds of cannabis that were actually in it. In the 367 AD, they when they took the original Hebrew text and translated it to Greek, 
they changed the word from cannabosum, which was cannabis, and they turned it into calamus, which is a marsh plant, like a pussy willow, which has zero value, has zero medicinal benefits. Have you ever heard of, of calamus before? No. You know what I mean? I, and they made up the word. So the Romans, when they had that, they switched it. And so for 1700 years, we have been lied to that this miracle plant has been helping people for thousands of years, dating back to Egyptians, Orientals, um, medicinal books have been using it for 8,000 years. And so when I found out these atrocities, I said, you know what, I'm just going to tell the world my story, give them access to free products and uh, let them see for themselves the proofs of the pudding. So I know that's a long story, but that no. is our story. That's an amazing story. I, and I'm so glad you're here to share it because I think a lot of people need to hear this. And, you know, I think one of the, the one of the important factors that you mentioned is that you know, what we put in our bodies and the toxins that go into our bodies play a big role, you know, in, in different neurological disorders, illnesses, you know, diseases, you know, we don't realize how much, you know, impact the foods we eat and the toxins that we absorb through lots of different things, laundry detergent, you know, just, there's so many things we can get into. And, it it all plays a role on our body and it in in our body affects our brain so it you know it, everything's connected so people have to really realize this and if you go to europe i don't know if you've ever been to europe but half the food that we eat in america is banned in europe and they will not allow that food in europe so you know our country really you know has to really put their priorities in line because you know if your body doesn't if your body can't break something down and it's unfamiliar with a substance what it does it stores it in your body and over time it just stores and stores and it affects the organs it affects the brain it affects your circulation it affects every part of your body and that's when you see things like this and you know, you didn't, you didn't really hear too much about autism or allergies or all these different things, you know, that you hear now, because we didn't have this food back then, you know, we didn't have a lot of the things that we're doing right now. We had, we had back then, but not as much, you know, you didn't, you know, they, they put more things into our foods today than they did when we were growing up. And, you know, a lot of the, even the red dyes or the foods that look really pretty, those are all cancerous dyes, you know, all those dyes that they put in foods. And even a lot of the fish are put, dyes are put on the fish to make them look nice and healthy. And you're so right, dairy, we were not meant to eat dairy. You know, it's our bodies were not meant to eat dairy. And there were several doctors that have written books on how dairy destroys the body you know, and, you know, people don't understand because they're just not educated, you know, in that area. But we really have to think about what we put in our bodies and the damage, the severity it could have on our bodies and how we function as a human being. Absolutely. And, but who's going to teach us? That's the thing. I mean, obviously here in America, we have a system that's broken. I mean, uh, we, you know, who, we're teaching the, the the four food groups and the and the pyramid triangle to kids yeah. in school, but it's it that's not true. Uh, you know, we don't need dairy to get calcium. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And if you look and do your research, you go back to you know the World War II and uh, and that's when the dairy thing you know kicked off for the farmers. Yeah. At, at the end of the day, look, you know, you have to like just. And if this is Pandora's box for you, and this is like opening up a whole new world, and I'm sure your audience obviously has heard this before, but you just have to go back to simpler times, like yes. the 1950s, yeah. right? Where people actually grew, they were mostly were farmers, like real, like, I mean, I come from Omaha, Nebraska, and, and I, a bunch of buddies had farms. My mom grew up on a farm, and we grew our own food, even if you didn't have a farm. And you understood how important the soil was, and you wanted yeah. to make sure the soil had all of the, the nutrients and the richness that you could grow multiple crops for and pass that land down to your family. Well, nowadays, all those small family farms are bought out by these big agra, and now they're just topsoil ripping it, stripping it with all yeah. these fertilizers and pesticides. So now our earth, like the even the food, you know, even if you're trying to eat healthy with fruits and vegetables, if you get a salad at McDonald's, it's filled with all kinds of pesticides and things like that. Glyphosate, you know, which is Roundup. There's yeah. research coming out, lawsuits that keep coming out. I mean, this is just causing cancer. 
Oh, and, yeah. And, 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 and it's a part of our, I mean, it's a part of us as Americans. So we just have to stop and pause. And sometimes what happens is if you get a severe diagnosis, I always say you can believe the diagnosis, never believe the prognosis. The prognosis is up to you, your support team, and and, and who you believe in in your faith. Yes. And, and that will get you through. Uh, if you have a, a shocking diagnosis like cancer or another autoimmune disease or whatever it is, that's your body saying, you know, hey, I'm trying to get your attention here. We need to we need to pause what we're doing. And and some people I've heard it many times. I was on a, a podcast with Chris B. Cancer, Chris Work, which is a great guy. Uh, I have to introduce you guys. And he had cancer at 26 and he he rejected the Western medicine and said, you know what? I think I can do this. And he just ate fruits and vegetables healthy and, and he was healthy. And he's got a great story. But when you get that diagnosis, it's like, OK, your body's saying I'm in dis ease so now we need if you if you stop and and really evaluate what you're doing if you work on your food your water your exercise your state of mind like you know meditation and mindfulness and sleep yeah. i promise you that will kick the butt out of any white pill someone wants to sell you uh our bodies are designed to heal just like when you're seven years old and you get a scratch on your arm and yes. you wake up the next morning and it's gone our bodies know how to heal. You just have to give it the tools. You just have to give it the building blocks to let it heal itself, not not feed it poison. Right. And even Dr. Axe, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but when he started, he got he was originally a chiropractor and his mother came down with cancer and he put his mother on a strict diet. And one of the things he put her on was bone broth. And he had, you know, he had fed her this strict diet, a lot of bone, bro bone broth. And she actually, her cancer disappeared. And I think she was went and went into the medical journals because they could not figure out how her cancer just disappeared. And I'm not saying that, you know, everybody should, you know, you get cancer, don't go to the doctor, you know, do everything holistically. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. What, what I'm trying to say is that there are alternatives out there that you could try to help assist you in your, in your recovery process that could actually help you. I've heard many people when they are diagnosed with something, even with something simple like hair loss, well, no, I can't do anything. It's in my genes. No, it might be in your genes to have certain, you know, vitamin deficiencies or certain things, but, you know, by taking care of yourself, by giving your body what it needs and what it's deficient of, you could actually improve or, or you could actually, you know, get rid of the condition, you know, dependent on what it is. Everybody's different. Everybody act, reacts differently to everything. So, you know, it, it depends on the individual, but they are, they are promising things out there that could, you know, positively, you know, impact a person's health in a very good way. Well, I promise you, eating healthy, drinking water, exercising, get good sleep and mindfulness. Yeah. Uh, and if you decide to use uh, Western medicine, you know, with chemo and radiation and surgery, um, that's all I ask is that you do your research and you ask lots of questions yes. and, and just understand. And, and if you get a strong diagnosis, you're going to be in fear. What I just like if you get a if you get in a car accident, we you don't take the first estimate that you get. You go no. and get three. Exactly. So go get three and find and make sure that the doctor that you're talking with is someone that's on the same page. A hundred percent. As philosophies and things like that. And uh, I just promise you at the end of the day, if you're going through a health scare, if you eat great, you know, you drink plenty of water, uh, you exercise, I promise whatever path you choose, it is only going to help. It won't hurt. And that's the Hippocratic oath is do no harm. And it will do no harm to eat more fruits and vegetables, drink plenty of water. You're supposed to drink your body weight cut in half in ounces. So if you weigh yes. 200 pounds, it's 100 ounces of, of good, clean water. Now, people don't might not understand. Look, you got to drink good water. And, and, and tap water is not good water. No. You know, even reverse osmosis is pretty good. Um, I always prefer to still personally. But yeah. make sure you're getting really, really clean water. If you can get natural spring water, that's my favorite. But do your research on the water. And, yes. But if you're drinking 100 ounces of water a day, if you're a 200 pound person, um, you're you're eating fruits and vegetables. And look, it's, you don't have to be perfect. No one wants to be perfect. You can have that, the, you know, the 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 cake for dessert, or uh, you know, a occasional whatever hamburger and things. Everything like that. in moderation. Okay. Yes, but understand, there's a reason that's called a plant based diet. Yeah, we should be eating plants and 100%. the whole thing, protein and meat. Yes, yes, yes. But I tell you what, some hemp. 
uh, protein powder or pea protein powder. They're fantastic. And they have all the amino acids. You do not need to eat meat. If you choose to eat meat, that's fine. Do a little bit of research on that and check out the inflammation. Again, yes. if you're healthy and you're exercising, eat whatever you want, do whatever you want. But mm -hmm. if you've got a severe diagnosis or you don't feel good or the health is, 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 is an issue, it's time to reevaluate. Food is our medicine. Yes, I agree. I agree. Food plays a humongous impact, you know, in our lives. And I don't think people realize how important because we are on, especially where I live, I'm by New York. So we're on a rush, rush, go, go. You know, I know the West Coast is like that too. And, you know, people are just grabbing the first thing in front of them. You know, you know they're eating the processed foods. That's one of the worst things you could do for your body. Most of the time, those processed foods aren't even real food, you know, and your body doesn't even recognize them when they go into your body. And, you know, people have to start taking some time out to prepare meals. And, you know, I have family members, my, my father grew up on a farm and, you know, they would eat what's in their backyard. I had a, a great aunt that used to just pick dandelions every day and she'd boil them and she'd make dandelion tea. And she lived to 103. Everything she ate was from her backyard. And, you know, it, it does play a huge role in how you, how you feel and how, how well your body reacts, especially as we get older and we produce a lot less of everything. We really need to stay on top of, you know, how we feel. And your son is, is, is an example. You know, he went from having autism to, to getting rid of the symptoms of autism. And that's huge. And that that's huge. Now you have, you sell cannabis now and because of the, the huge impact that it made on your son's life, you try, you're trying to get the word out. You do the podcast, you know, and tell everybody your podcast name so they have it. Yeah. So it's called Miracle Plant. You can find it on Apple or Spotify, wherever you listen. It's called Miracle Plant. We have lots of, uh, you know, wonderful people like JC on and, um, and just get to share their stories of holistic healing. Um, and we also share stories of people who are using cannabis and hemp. And, and one thing I want to clarify for people, because uh, a lot of people are confused about this. So cannabis is the actual name of the plant. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if you call celery, celery, right. and hemp is the version of the plant that doesn't have any THC or less than 0. exactly. And then marijuana is actually um, the version of cannabis that has higher than 0.3% THC. And that number was made up and we're actually going to move the number here in the Senate this year. But um, we think of marijuana, but it was, it's a made, it's a, it's a slang term from Mexico. Right. And they used that in the reefer madness in 1936 to scare people and the jazz musicians. And there's a whole political thing with that. And they're also talking about how the guys that were doing cotton and paper didn't want to compete with hemp that George Washington and Thomas Jefferson grew because it was so efficient and they had these land. And so there's a whole thing anyway. So they made up the word marijuana. They made a, and then they passed a bill in 1937 called the marijuana tax act that made not only marijuana illegal, also made hemp illegal, the stuff that we have clothes. in. so everything up until 2018 that you were getting hemp clothes and hemp seeds and all those mm -hmm. things, they had to come from overseas. So for the last 80 years, we were importing hemp because of these crazy laws. And so right. uh, fortunately, they turned it back. And in 2018, they made it completely clear that hemp is 100 percent legal and uh, and as it always should have been. And it's just yeah. so ex you look at hemp as a superfood of superfoods. Right. We've all right. had these kale diets and celery juice runs. Just think of hemp as the superfood of superfoods that helps our body find homeostasis. Well, I think people who are against it and fought against it were people who just feared it because they didn't know a lot about it. I believe the the um, the uh, cannabis leaf has about a, over a thousand strands and each strand affects the brain differently and can do different things for the body when extracted properly. And I don't think people realize that there are so many different strands in that one leaf itself and how many different things it could do. It, it's helping cancer. It helps people with anxiety. It helps people, you know, the, that have panic attacks. It helps people, you know, with pain, you know, it, it blocks the pain receptors so people don't have to experience all different types of pain you know, it relaxes people, you know, it has sedative qualities that make people feel more relaxed and, and they could focus better. And there, there are so many things. They, and even the parts of the leaf can actually give you energy. 
So there's, there's a lot of things, you know, people, I think people just associate it from the seventies and they think about, you know, how people were smoking pot all over the place and just walking around zoned out. And that's not the image we people, people need to, you know, that's just, that's just a myth. You know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, 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 it's a natural substance that actually could help people in so many ways. And it's helped people who have cancer and it helped your son. He, he's an example. He helped him with autism. So, you know, the, this, the, the, you know, the cannabis leaf has so many wonderful qualities and can help so many people. I just suggest to people if they're on medications and they're on statins and other, other medications that have to do with the heart or other, other, you know, strong medications for the brain and other, other things that they just make sure that there's going to be no interaction if they're going to try it, because some medications will interact because some medications do have sedative qualities. And if you, you take something like hemp and then you take something like, you know, um, with certain medications, it might lower the potency or it might make the person, not, you know, feel very zoned out. And, you know, and some medications, they interact with um, cannabis and it lowers the potency. So if, if someone, someone has a serious condition, you know, you don't want to lower the potency of the medication. You want to make sure with a doctor, you know, if you could take it, if you can take it, you know, you know, do you have to, you know, what can you do and what can you not do? So that's the only thing. Yeah. And I would say too, because hemp is so great at regulating the, what's called the endocannabinoid system Mm -hmm. body. um, It most times what I see with any type of, uh, you know, uh, pill uh, interaction is that because it makes the body better and the liver, because a lot of it, the uh, the pharmaceutical drugs interact a lot with the liver and the liver enzyme is that it helps, um, uh, the liver work better. So yeah. we'll see a lot of times with medication is people will, the average person that walks into one of our stores uh, is taking four pharmaceuticals. And after 30 days of using our product consistently, they're down to less than one. And wow. so it helps our bodies naturally feel better. Just like drinking water, exercising, eating, right? This is kind of a little bit of a cheat pill and it's not a pill, it's a plant. And so, um, but yes, always check with your, 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 um, your doctor. Hemp is hundred percent legal. We've been educating doctors all over the country and the world there. It wasn't their fault. They did not teach them about this. Yes. Uh, in med- they told, taught them a lot about pharmaceuticals, but they didn't teach them a lot about, uh, you know, unfortunately, if you even look at it, like, you know, most doctors only got one class on food and nutrition. Oh, really? You know, zero on exercise. So it's not their fault. Um, the system was set up to teach them something for a certain way. I mean, Western medicine is Western medicine. And if you have trauma in your life, something, one of my employees just got in a car accident last night and thank God she's okay. But if there's something that happened tragically in your life, uh, the hospitals are the best place to go. But if you have a disease that uh, basically was created by external factors like food or toxins or what have you, the chances are that you definitely need to take a, a, a close ex- a look and examine what am I eating? What am I drinking? And I promise you, 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 you and decide whatever you want to decide. But if you just be really cognitive of what mm-hmm. you're putting in your mouth, you're going to you're going to feel a heck of a lot better. I'm telling you, if you just drink 100 ounces of water a day, yes. just do it. Do it for seven days. And that's right. my challenge. And I promise you, your skin will look better, you'll sleep better, and you'll feel better. We are so dehydrated as a nation. Oh, as a- definitely. So People sometimes, I- they, they complain about fatigue, and they don't realize a lot of that fatigue is because they're dehydrated. They're not drinking enough of water. And, you know, so many people say, I'm, I feel tired all the time. Well, I drink coffee all day, but, you know, I only drink like a cup or two of water here and there periodically, you know, well, this is why you're tired. This is why you have fatigue, you know, and people don't associate it. You know, every time you have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, you should be drinking two bottles of water to rehydrate yourself because coffee dehydrates you. Absolutely. And but it, and it's you and I and in, in, in your audience talking about this and, I don't know how else we're going to get the word out there, but I think we're just going to have to keep talking about it till everybody knows. At least they know I need to drink more water. I need to eat better food. I need to yeah. stop eating the crap that that looks good, tastes good, that's advertised everywhere. That other countries, like you said, like France and even Russia, like we sent some some uh, some supplies and food over to Russia like 10, 20 years ago, and they let the food rot at the border. Russia. <laughs> they said, we're, no, 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 we're not giving this to our citizens. And when you go to France, 
you look at the ingredients for like cookies, it's like milk, eggs, butter, sugar. Yes. Flour, right. And you look at you look at the ingredients on a package of like goldfish or something here in our country, and you're like, you need a doctorate degree just to pronounce some of those words. Well, so again, that's that's the thing. If you yeah. can't pronounce it, then it can't be good for you. And that's what exactly. I always tell people. Exactly. Exactly. And we have to also make sure that the soil, what kind of soil do we have? Because like there, you know, so many soils are contaminated, you know, and you put these pesticides on the soil and the soil eventually will become contaminated and the food you're, you're producing is going to, isn't going to be healthy. You know, we, we weren't meant to take those pesticides in, you know, and uh, you know, there is a, there is a town right by me, it's all farmland. And then they built houses on it, but they put strict laws and regulations. You know, you're not allowed to put this on it. You're not allowed to put that on it. And, you know, I'll tell you one thing, my, my, my in-laws live there and they would, they would plant flowers and trees and bushes and those things would bloom unbelievably. And they didn't need, they didn't put, have to put anything on them. It was just, they just naturally bloomed because they were, the, the land was never touched. It was, it was farmland from the beginning. They sold the town and the, they, the, the soil remained healthy and you could see it. Anything people put in, on the ground just bloomed like unbelievable. You yeah. Know? Well, we have, we have micro biomes in our, in our, in our gut. That's our gut health. Yeah. And that's immune system lives and it's the same thing with the soil it's like it's got its own microbiome uh, and and if you start adding poisons and toxins and pesticides and fertilizers and it just kills the soil you know and, and if you've ever seen um uh, i think it's called it's a documentary that just came out like the littlest big farm and it, it just talks about how you have the, the old way of farming was you had cows and you had you know, the pasture and you had your farmland and you kind of rotated these things and some of the manure from the cows you used. And it was all this like perfect ecosystem that we could grow these great fruits and vegetables, just like I guarantee the farmland that you're talking about. But then when big agri came over, it was just about how much corn can we make? How many soybeans can we make? Just, you know, topsoil. And then it's, it's just, it's, basically like planting food on a uh, sand, a poison sandy desert, because there is no health in the soil. So right. where your new come from, your, your microbiome comes from the plant, which comes from the soil. So when yeah. we're kids eating dirt, it's actually a good thing. That's microbiome in there, as long as it's good, healthy dirt. And when we were kids, I'm sure it was, <laughs> but you know, yeah, it, it, it does matter. You got to eat organic. Go to the farmers markets. Try to support local. You know, talk to the farmers. Are you guys organic? You know, some of them might not have the USDA because you have to go through a bunch of paperwork. But just talk to them. You know, and 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 get a relationship at the farmers market. You got to get rid of that pesticides. You know, it, it's going to be one of those things. Like, remember in the 1950s or 40s, they were like, you know, smoking's good, and they had all these commercials and all this craziness. <laughs> Fifty years from now maybe 20 it's going to, we're going to look back and be like, can you believe we allowed them to spray that pesticides on our food that yeah. we gave? Them? Uh, so you and I are having this conversation. I hope your audience uh, really takes notice that, you know, even I go to like Trader Joe's and the bananas are 29 cents each for organic or 19 cents for non. Yeah. Spend that time. Take care of your health because there's nothing more important. Exactly. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Now, where can people find your website? Yeah. If you guys want to go learn more about our story and, and, and see what our products do, I would just go to uh, 101hemp.org and uh, check it out. You'll see me and my wife and family on there and we'll tell more of our story. We have lots of blogs and educational things. We have some really great products that we have super discounts on. We've never raised our prices, even in this in this new economy. Uh, our mission is to reach 1 billion people by 2025 by being on great podcasts like yours and, and just keep telling our story. And, and uh, you know, the world's ready for a change. We need to be healthy. We need to be mindful. Yes. And I'm um, so that uh, you were able to have me on today. Oh, it's been a pleasure. I'm so glad that you came on. You had such wonderful information. And the story uh, of your son, too, is just it's proof right there and then, you know, and I'm so glad that you were able, you know, that you stood persistent and you didn't, you didn't let others just give you a diagnosis and you just accepted it and, you know, and, and just dealt with it. You actually went out and you searched for a way to, to help your son and you found a way to help your son. So kudos to you. 
you know, this is an amazing story. And I'm so glad all the information you shared today is, is something that people need to hear and people really need to think about and think about what they're doing every day to their bodies and maybe make some changes, you know, create some journals, what you're putting in your body, where you're going. And one thing before we go is that with the waters, they did a study of bottled water and a lot of people buy bottled water and a lot of the bottled water had impurities in it. They weren't 100% pure. So really think about where you're getting your water, do the research, find out where the healthiest water is. And, you know, and, and, you know, that's the water you should be consuming because, you know, not all bottled water is, is good for you. And also when the sunlight hits that bottled water, the contamination from the plastic goes into the water, then into our bodies. So you really have to be, you know, think twice, where are you getting your water? Cause that plays a big impact also. Absolutely. Do the research. I recommend natural spring water or uh, distilled water, but do your own research. Reverse osmosis or RO water is good as well. Mm -hmm. uh, don't drink the tap. And even things like Dasani, which is a Coke-owned company, um, it's basically all it is is tap water recycled. And it's not, it's not, it's, you think you're doing good for yourself, you're not. Exactly. Uh, like you said, water, uh, you know, and the, the molecules from the, from the sun hitting it and sitting in there for overtime, you're not doing. So do your research. There's nothing more important. Our bodies are made up of you know, 80% water, give it the best water and you will feel so much better. I promise you, if you just drink more clean water, uh, you're going to feel so much better and uh, so have such a happier, healthier life. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Justin, for being on the show and sharing all this wonderful information. I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing. And thank you. Thank you for everything that you've done because you're really making an impact on this world by sharing, you know, your story, your, the CBD that you came out with everything. You're, you're just a wonderful person overall. And thank you very much for everything. Well, thanks for having me. And I hope that we connect soon. I'm yes. a Mets. We get in the playoffs again. We might have to connect when I go out to, to go see my Mets win. Well, our family is a Mets fan too. So <laughs> we might be joining you. <laughs> you have a great day. You too.